Okay, guys, welcome to podcast week three. Is it already week three? What? Wow. All right. Uh, so I'm going to first off start with the fact that you might hear something in the background. It's called my fan. My room is freezing. In case you haven't heard, North Carolina is covered in white stuff. Um, or snow, uh, as snow, as Deadpool calls it, cocaine, sky cocaine. So I have sky cocaine around my house right now, and I is cold. So, um, I'm just going to warn you now, you can't hear my heater in the background, and no, I'm not turning it off. Uh, yeah, so if you guys can kind of see by the title here, um, we're going to talk about my Me Too story. But I want to put some disclaimers out there. Uh, it's definitely going to get heavily edited, so if it sounds a little, uh, ch 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 that's why, because, um, yeah, I'm going to have to edit probably a lot as I'm trying to find these words to talk about this, so I'm just going to apologize straight up right now. This is going to be a weird podcast. The other thing I want to talk about is... I don't want anybody who knows where I used to work or the company I used to work for, I don't want you guys to harass anybody there or, you know, contact them or anything like that. What happened, happened. Um, I'm not happy about it. It wasn't handled properly, which I'll get to in a minute. You know, barring legal action I don't want anything to happen to my workplace or the people in it that might have been involved I will not be saying any names I will not say the place I work for so unless you know you won't know um so yeah I just want to make that very clear that I don't want anything being put against the company I worked for or the store that I worked for or the people that I worked for I know with a lot of these stories that are coming out, people are being attacked, and unless you are uh, legal and or you work for the corporate and have found out how where I work, um, yeah, it the, 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 all this is is just me telling my story. I'm not looking for anything. I'm not asking for anything. Uh, I just want my side of the story told and. You know, with this movement, I just think it's good for me to talk about my experience. Um, and thankfully, I also want to kind of put, what happened to me is in no way a comparison to any of these other girls. Um, but uh, as some of you said, it doesn't mean what happened to me is any less. They definitely got handed a lot worse situation than I did, and they got a lot worse things happening to them but it does not lessen the importance of what happened to me um, so I just kinda wanna put that there hater comments will be saved and deleted off this page um, and if you got any support or you wanna tell your me too story please feel free to do that in the comments below um, I, this is all about the sisterhood and brotherhood for those there are men who've dealt with self, um, sexual harassment as well. This is about all of us talking about our stories and putting our message out there and not hiding from our pain and not become, you know, letting it hurt us more than the initial situation. Um, so I know that's enough of a disclaimer. Uh, like I said, if you guys have any questions about what happened or about anything on this please feel free to ask me down below like I said no official names no official pronouns um, I might make up some names to talk about people just so I don't say he she he she he she he she a lot um, so hopefully <laughs> you can follow along so this happened um, it's been about two maybe three years now it's been about two years there, let me backstory a little bit. Um, I had dated previously a guy that I worked with, uh, and I learned a lot of things from that mistake. One, I don't date younger men. 
period. I mean, that's just, there are a few men I will make exceptions for. Niall Horn, I'm looking at you. Um, but for the most part, I don't date younger men. Um, I don't date outside of my faith. I have now decided I will not date men at work. Men that I, or, you know, date my co-stars. Co-stars? Co-workers. I don't date my co-stars either. Um, and I don't date, this is going to sound horrible, but I don't date below my intellect to a major degree. Now, obviously, you know, there's going to be someone smarter than me and someone who's may not understand some of the things that I understand, but I don't date somebody who I have to explain everything to. Um, now, let me say to that, I love special needs people. Uh, you can ask any of my friends, family. Um, I, I love special needs. I, th th those people are some of the coolest friends I've made. Uh, they, they, they are such just down-earth people. They're, they're not bullshitters. They tend to be very blunt and open and honest and upfront with you. And I love that. They have no filter. And those are some of the realest people I've ever met. With all that being said, um, I don't remember when he really first started approaching me. Um, there was a guy who I worked with. And he works in a different department. Well, he works in the same area that I works in. And he's just one of those people you see in the break room. And he made friends with one of my friends. So he would always sit with us at lunch. And, you know, we would talk about different stuff. And mostly be me and my friend and a few other people who would be sitting with us. We would be talking about something and he would just kind of be a passive person in the conversation and um sorry guys <laughs> I told you this is going to be interesting um so you know he he was just kind of there he's just one of those people like I said he he is special needs he I've talked to some people who went to school with him and they said yeah he was in the special program he just you can see that he's not all there I don't know if like, he's like officially autistic, but he's just special. Um, he, he's one of those kind of people you have to be very blunt with and, and be like, no, honey, you, you shouldn't eat that Tide Pod. He's one of those kind of people. Um, I can't believe I'm talking with my hands like you guys can see me. <laughs> That's just the way I am. Uh, not like you guys could see that. Why would I tell you that? He, there was just one day, I don't remember exactly when it was, but he had approached me and asked if we could hang out after work, you know, on a day off. And I was like, honey, I, I really can't. Um, at that time, me and my mom and some other people were working with the Henry River Mill Village. You guys seen some of those videos. That's when we were um, doing the yard work out there and doing the archery. So my days off were Thursdays at Henry River, Saturdays at Shabbat. So um, I, I really, I had no free time. And I told him that, I said, baby, I work full time. My days off are busy. And I even invited him out to join us at Henry River. But he's one of those that depends on his mom to take him places. So he couldn't, you know, ask his mommy to pretty much drive all the way out there just to hang out with me. But here's one of the things he always kept asking me to hang out with him but he never said where he never tried to get to know me he never he never tried to find a, a commonality between us he always just would talk about wanting to hang out how me and our supervisors were to him um, he would talk about his ex-girlfriend his high school sweetheart who pretty much went to prom with him and then dumped him I mean, he, he never got to know me. He never tried to find the common denominator. He just wanted somebody to hang out with. And that wasn't going to be me. Because I, I could definitely tell he wanted a romantic side. And he was just like, yeah, I've been so lonely since my girlfriend broke up with me. And I'm like, okay, I've been recently single too. But, and I kept trying to tell him, I'm like, dude, 
I'm not dating right now. I had just gotten over my breakup with my ex. I'm not really into dating anybody right now. But I don't date younger. I don't date outside my religion. And I, like I said, you know, I just kept hammering that to him. I said, what you need to do, because he's like probably almost 10 years younger than me. Maybe a little less than that. But yeah, he's a lot younger than me. But like I told him, I said, right now you need to focus on you. You know, you, you're, you're fresh out of high school. You just, you know, broke up with your high school sweetheart, whatever. You, you need to focus on you. You need to find out what you want to do and what you like and enjoy this time being single and not have someone telling you what you can and can't do. And I told him, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm focusing on me. I'm making me a better person to be with somebody else. And I really just kept trying to tell him that. I never really said no to him. Um, but I, I always told him, I really, I didn't exactly say, like, it's not that I didn't say no. I just told him reasons why not. I mean, there's even one day when I was sick, but, or I, I forget exactly what it was, but I was hanging outside work in a, a truck that we had rented. So cool. I love the truck. Um, but I was hanging out in the bed of the truck, just chilling, and my friend showed up. And the next thing you know, there he was. And he was at it again. And then, like, for a while there, when I told him, I was like, dude, no, really. I can't do this. And, you know, I, I'm busy. I've got my religion. I, I don't date outside Messianic Jewish, you know, guys. I just don't. Um, he would leave me alone for a while. But then, about three or so months later, he was back at it. And he's like, you know, I think we should hang out sometime. I'm like, where? He's like, well, we could go bowling. He's like, I, I really don't do bowling. I, I, I'm, I, I probably did that when I was a kid. And with my dad. And we did bumper bowling. But I, I, for the most part, don't do that kind of athletic, sportsy stuff. But like I said, he never wanted to get to know me. He just wanted companionship. But he didn't seem to find a way to make that happen and I've been talking to some other people who had seen him hit on me and stuff and they're like yeah apparently at least one girl that I had, had been pretty close to she said oh yeah he hits on me all the time and I'm like what seriously I was like okay and she had actually had to leave work for a while I was like well aren't you lucky you got out of this for a while you got away from him for at least a few months sucks you were gone but and then slowly but surely I was talking to different girls at work um, after the incident and turned out I wasn't the only one he was harassing um, there was a couple girls who said that he asked for their phone number a couple of them actually did give him their number he would be texting them hey where are you what are you doing right now it's like uh, working so should you be he would be texting them from his you know part of the workplace well, he's supposed to be on the clock, and he would be too busy asking them what they were doing. And this thing, he never asked for my number. He only bothered me at work. But they slowly but surely, it turns out there was at least ten of us girls that he had been harassing. And I mean, he would stop by my section where I worked in, and he would hang out and try to talk to me. And thankfully, one of my supervisors would be like, um. Dude, you, you need to not be here. She needs to work. They have customers. They, they, when they don't have customers, they need to be doing other stuff. So you need to move on, go to break, go to lunch, or get your butt back to work. They could already see that things were happening and that he was not doing what he was supposed to be doing and he was harassing me. And it wasn't like harassing. He was just bothering me. And then, like I said, he wasn't violent. He wasn't pushy or demanding but he was just always there he's that creepy stalker you see in every movie every TV show um, and one of the reasons why I was kind of nervous to push him away um, like I said he, he, he always seemed like um, well if you've ever seen the Criminal Minds episode 
with James Vanderbeek and um, uh, Don Swayze. If you ever see that episode, he kind of reminds me of, of James Vanderbeek's character. Just that that real loner, not quite all there type, who when gets turned down, turns. Um, I was always so afraid that there were just he just seemed like the kind of guy who enough girls told him no and that one day he would force one of us to say yes and or something else and or something else and I mean really I was scared of him even though he was this probably not even a hundred pounds soaking wet little stick of a redneck boy I was still scared because I mean I was accused of being a school shooter the people were actually afraid that I was gonna snap so I mean I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking oh my god he's crazy he doesn't take no for an answer he doesn't understand concepts like dude I don't like you like that I mean one of the girls he was hitting on she had a very serious boyfriend a huge probably like three times his size boyfriend who they are now engaged uh, I think in fact they're getting married later this year but I mean he just he didn't care really who you were or what you were doing he just had these certain girls he was hitting on and I mean there was a few of them that he would hug on or you know like pat their back or something like that but then there's what happened with me um, so <laughs> and finally we're getting to the big incident the uh, mothership as it were so there was one day um, I was sitting in the break room doing my thing doing what I always do just sitting there um, none of my friends were back there so I just picked the first empty table I was sitting at well here let me let me see if I can try try to draw you a picture here draw a little diagram here on the screen so I was sitting at the privilege I was sitting on the corner of the table you guys th that's me right there okay so he came in and sat at the head of the table but closer to me so we were kind of catty corner we were kind of 90 degreed to each other and oh, by the way if you guys notice I'm talking really really fast that's the sign of um, my nervousness so I'm sorry if you want just slow it down or keep repeating this because um, this is kind of a nerve-wracking for me um, but I'm shaking literally talking about this I really haven't talked about it outside the investigation so we were sitting you know catty corner like that and there was I, I could you know I felt her legs bump under the table but hell we all do that when because it's you know small break room we're all kicking each other under the tables I didn't think anything of it at first and then I realized something else was happening um <laughs> wow I didn't know that I could talk about it like this um then I it, it, it's kind of those things and let me also put a disclaimer here I am the type when I'm in an uncomfortable situation I tend to freeze up I, I either if I can take charge of the situation I'm usually like this just rapid fire crazy um, but if it's a situation where I'm not comfortable in where I don't think I have any control in I tend to freeze I tend to just deer in the headlights sit there and, 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 and fathom and calculate what the hell is happening to me right now and as soon and then like eventually my brain goes you might want to leave right now and, and that's kinda how it happened it, it took a second like is he kept scooting around the table to where he pretty much was his chair was teed up to mine and next thing I realized his hand was running up and down my leg like from hip to thought to knee just back and forth a couple times while he was again once again trying to convince me that I should hang out with him and that we should be in a relationship together and I was just I mean really I froze I, I was just like is he doing what I think he's doing and then there was just a moment in me that went oh my god he is 
and I immediately bolted out of my chair and bolted out of the break room and thankfully because I, I really I just like went to sheer panic mode I'm like oh my god what do I do now what do I do now I mean he he, we, he we, I've already haha <laughs> can you tell him dealing with this I had already talked to my supervisors about the fact that he's been you know trying to hit on me and you know I'm sure there's a lot of haters gonna be like you shouldn't be turning guys down screw you he was you know hitting on me in, in not the normal way and that's the thing so I had already been talking to my supervisors about the fact that I didn't like and appreciate the words that he was saying to me and now he's now put his hand on me in a not appropriate place and I'm just like what thankfully I go down the hallway a little bit and there is the supervisor that I was talking about that had told him to get out of my area multiple times especially after she had uh, been informed about that he had been bothering me um, so then I find her and I tell her what he did to me I'm just like girl she he just had his hand on my leg I mean from hip to knee his hand was on my leg and of course there's no uh, cameras in the break room so there's no proof that it happens which is one of the reasons why I feel like my story doesn't count because there's no proof there was no real witnesses there's no evidence to it so you know hell I could be making it up but I'm not um, so one of the things like I was saying I talked to some other girls because I know who was in the break room who might have seen it. So I went to them as we were filling out the official reports. And I was like, hey, I know this is going to sound weird, but I said, okay, I know, do you remember this day I was in the break room? He was next to me and something happened. She goes, I saw him over there with you and I was getting worried for you because he's been hitting on me and I was like well wait a minute what and she was telling me what you know he'd been doing to her and harassing her and asking her out and bothering her and she's like me we have a special place for special needs people so we felt bad turning him away so um I'm not sure where I left off sorry guys I had to step away for a second um so he said you know so I found out that I wasn't the only one um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. <laughs> I've already gone on so long. I don't remember. But yeah, I found out there was about 10 of us girls involved. I think I already mentioned that. Sorry if I already have. Eventually, I you know, was filling out the paperwork. And we gave it to um, the, the highest level manager. Let me put it that way. Because, like I said, I don't want <laughs> anything <sighs> to go bad. Um, but anyway, so... We, um, well, actually, I'm trying to think, did I give it to her first? Or, because at work, one of the things we have is, um, well, we have an open door policy. But one of the other things we have is a thing uh, that's just the ethics hotline. If there's something outside of norm and, um, and, and you talk to your managers and you're not getting a response to you thing, go to ethics. So, um, we said we we have a thing of ethics. Um, I don't I think we went just through management first. And then they contacted the ethics board and decided how to go through with things. And I mean, at first they just got I wrote down everything. You know, the days that he had been harassing me that um, you know, the things that led up to the event. Um, and then what happened that day? And I wrote it all out and sent it in a business email. And then I told him, I said, by the way, uh, I'm not the only one he's been bothering. As far as I know, I'm the only one he's touched like that. But I'm not the only one he's been harassing. So you guys might want to talk to these girls. And so next thing I know, and I did warn a few of the girls, I said, by the way, um, if you end up in the manager's office, 
this is why because of him and they're like oh you, you reported him I was like oh heck yeah um, and then about a week or so later they I actually heard over the PA system each one of us being called into the manager's office or over um, inner walkies that we've got I was hearing slowly but surely throughout about a week's time each one of us getting called into the manager's office and um, we actually they had a special questionnaire um, like interview process almost like you know police investigation type questions that they asked each one of us to answer to our fullest extent and complete honesty what had happened and they said you know leave no details out and if you don't know anything don't lie just tell us what all you remember and you know as much as you can so that way you know HQ can decide where to go with this these so the ethics board can decide how to handle the situation so it was just like okay finally we're getting somewhere with this guy and you know time went on and this is where things I think were the worst for me and for the whole process when someone is accused of sexual harassment um, within the company the actual corporate guidelines say that one or both parties of the um, incident is to be removed from the store either sent to another place or is put on leave that is the official corporate guideline they did not follow that um, so right there I was not happy because I did ha um, look up those things of okay what do we do next because I mean this is sexual harassment sexual harassment is unwanted touching or technically someone says that even if you see like a couple or you see even somebody touching somebody it's still sexual harassment to the people who had to watch you so it is a combination of wanted and unwanted touching uh, so I actually looked up you know what all I still need to do or if there was anything I needed to do anybody else I needed to give this information to and that's when I found out that they had already not been following procedure because during the from the time he put his hand on me um <clears throat> up until the you know throughout this investigation he was not removed from the store I was not removed from the store in fact they didn't want him to know he was being investigated they didn't want him to know what was going on so to because we did have the same supervisors they made sure that you know when I needed to go to break that he wasn't on break and that if I was on break that they had to make sure to keep him from going back there while I was back there I was escorted by either a co-worker or a supervisor to and from my breaks now I worked at the front of the store the break room is at the back of the store I was escorted like a freaking prisoner who had done something wrong to and from my breaks I had to they had to make sure and go in there and make sure he wasn't on break or back in the back of the store when I was back there they kept us separate but in way of keeping me captive I mean there was even one time when they screwed up and I was back there I think on my lunch break and they allowed him to go to break or that is he probably went to break without telling them he was going and next thing I know he's in the break room I had to take my lunch leave the break room and go to our personnel office and sit in there because they said one of the things yeah if he does try to approach you walk away if he does unfortunately enter the break room when you're in there leave the room and it really it was just so bad I felt like I was the one being punished for being the victim and I really think more than anything that was how the worst part of it not what he did to me but what they didn't do and what they did to me as a victim 
I can understand some of these girls who had to sign NDAs and were hushed into their silence. They were forced into their silence. I can understand that because, I mean, I was forced into, you know, I mean, I was escorted. I felt like I was in witness protection without the actual protection. Like I said, I was escorted everywhere. I was the one who had to, you know, be arranged. You know, I had to, to go elsewhere if he entered the room I was in. And that hurt more than anything. That was the part that made me feel humiliated more than him touching me. Because really, nobody saw it. But everybody saw me being walked to the break room and back up to my area. Everyone saw me having to take breaks in an office because I had to avoid him. That was the worst part of it all. I, nothing else was as bad as being escorted like a criminal, like a bad dog. I mean, really, it, it, was, it was humiliating. And then pretty much um, about a month or so later, I was told that they took him in the office and talked to him that it's not polite to talk to girls that way and that he just needs to do his job and, and not bother us girls anymore. Don't go into other areas that you don't have to be in and, you know, just do your job and, and leave those girls alone. They pretty much slapped him on the wrist and let him continue his job. After having ten different female co-workers say that he had been harassing them and several times on the clock and even after touching me they still allowed him to keep his job now thankfully um, three or so months after that he screwed up and they did fire him for that but they didn't fire him for the right thing so that's not gonna go on his record and he could continue to go to other places and do it again and actually I talked to a young lady who worked with him somewhere else and she said oh honey that's why he left us he was fired for hitting on all the girls and I'm like wait a minute he was fired there for doing the same thing he was doing here why is no one doing anything about this and they said because he's special needs they're afraid that they fire him it's gonna be against the ADA and blah 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 and his parents will probably sue so they find other reasons to fire him. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. It was just grossly misconduct. It was grossly mishandled. And I mean, I just, like I said, I have felt so bad about what happened. I felt like, I said, I was the one who was wrong. And actually, one of the times, one of the questions they asked us, was, well, did you ever tell him no? Did you ever tell him to leave you alone? I'm like, not in exact words, but, I mean, I gave him a thousand and six excuses why we couldn't date, and I kept telling him I wouldn't date him, and th but, like, especially with the incident of him touching me, it's like, well, did you, you know, push him away? Did you tell him no? I said, really? No, because I didn't realize what he was doing, and the second I realized what he was doing, I left the room. <coughs> I wasn't going to sit there and be like, oh, no, you shouldn't do that, and then leave the room. I freaked out. So, like I said, some of the questioning, again, made it seem like it was my fault that he touched me because I never slapped him. I never, you know, told him off. I never was harshly, meanly blunt to him. And because of his mental status, he got away with it. And he will probably continue to get away with it in other places. I, I, I hope that whoever hears this, if you do work for my company, and especially if you work in the higher-ups, let me know what you think. Because <laughs> I've got a lot of people on my list who used to work for the same company I did. I, I hate this. I really do. 
and I mean, part of me wants to call a lawyer and be like, here's what happened. Here's what didn't happen. I want to sue the out of them. But then there's part of me that loves the company, just hates that one store. But the fun thing is, if you sue the company, you can't just sue a store. You have to sue the whole company. And uh, you can't work for a company you've sued. So I don't know what to do from this point on. If anybody's got any advice for me about how I should proceed this kind of situation, let me know. Because um, really, I, I just don't know anymore. What happened to me happened. And like I said, he'll go on to do it more. I know he will. He probably already has. He probably already had three more jobs since he's worked with me. Because, you know, he, he just, he's pathetic. He's a pathetic little dork. And I mean, really, for how it was mishandled, I even one time, after he had been fired for quite a while, he was in the store shopping, and I had a panic attack. I mean, I started freaking out, and my friend's like, oh, come on, you know he's not going to do anything to you. I said, I know he's not, but I don't want to see him. Because seeing him just reminds me that, you know, what he did to me, and seeing him reminds me that he's allowed to be in here, and and nothing was ever done to him, and really, I, I can't, I can't look at him, I can't be around him, and thankfully I don't have to anymore, because I'm no longer there, and, but, I mean, it's just, it's, it's disgusting how this happened, and how no one cared about what happened to us girls. I mean, like I said, he was breaking company rule by contacting people on the clock and they were breaking company rule by mishandling a sexual harassment case. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna stop here because wow, we're around like 40 minutes here. But I just wanted to put out my story and like I said, it's not as bad as what some of the girls have dealt with. Um, you know, I mean, there's some girls who were really, you know, sexually harassed and abused. Thankfully, mine is only a minor touching and verbal harassment, but it doesn't make the legitimateness of it go away. It doesn't change the fact that my case was mishandled because I had some wussy managers because I had a uh, a medically excused abuser I don't know but um let me know what you guys think you know if you've been in a situation like this like I said, let me know in the comments below if you have any advice for me or if you need advice on how to deal with your own situation please put in the comments below and hopefully we can all help each other out on this um, I think we all need to stand together, tell our story, even if it was, you know, wrongful hugging or, like I said, being stalked and harassed, you know, by a co-worker. It's still sexual harassment. Any kind of unwanted advancement, verbal or physical, is sexual harassment. Know your laws, know your rights. And know when to stand up for yourself and your fellow people. Anyway, guys, um, thanks for listening to my rant and my panic attack. Um, I love you guys. I'm glad you guys are here to listen to my crazy ramblings. Yeah, now I'm going to go to bed after I scream into my pillow. And I will... Uh, See you guys Monday with a Monday vlog. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Love. Peace. Bye.